Good morning, Swift. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And a happy Mother's Day to all those wonderful mothers out there. Uh, kids, if you're watching this, get hold of your mom, give a big kiss and a hug, and, uh, and say a happy Mother's Day to her. Uh, treat her with lots of love today and every day, of course. Uh, a few announcements before we begin. Uh, again, physical worship uh, hasn't uh, started yet back at the, uh, at the church, but please continue to pray for that. There is some uh, light uh, shining there, and uh, it seems like it will not be that long before things start moving along and we get back to uh, worshiping at uh, Zuan Tang. So for the time being, it's still going to be online. Um, and I encourage you, if uh, you want to go to Sozo and you've got some kids that want to have some fun over there, please do so. And uh, there's a great uh, uh, Sunday kids program uh, that's just started again today, which is uh, really great. And uh, also with um, the... Uh, offering. Uh, we sent out the uh, WeChat and uh, Alipay QR codes earlier on in the WeChat group. Feel free to scan that. Uh, or uh, if you're at Sozo, that's on the box uh, by the door as well. Uh, please just feel free anytime to use that. Try to keep it uh, minimum. If you're able to do uh, other means by bank transfer and that, please do uh, give me a buzz, let me know, and we'll get the details to you so that you can make that. We don't want too much going through this channel. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, begin today's worship, and uh, we're going to start with the reading of Scripture. Today it's taken from Psalm 38, uh, verses 1 to 4, and then uh, 21 to 22. Let's read that together. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Your arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down on me. Because of your wrath, there is no health in my body. There is no soundness in my bones because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to help me, my Lord and my Savior. Let us pray. Abba Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we lift up this time to you. We gaze up to you, putting you clearly into our hearts and our minds right now. We ask that you will cast aside all the anxieties of the world so that we may come into your presence right here and right now. Help us in our hearts and in our minds to be focused on you. When we sing these praise songs, when we worship you, I pray we do that in word and in deed with all of who we are, that our minds may be filled with these words, that we may sing them with true meaning to you. I pray, Lord, that your word be rich in our hearts, that you speak to us clearly here today. We may receive you, receive your word, that it be inscribed upon our hearts, Lord, and we may walk forth energized for this week, and that we may continue in our every day to worship you in every day of our lives. Because worship is a lifestyle, Lord. And we want to worship you with all we are and who, who you've created us to be. So, Lord, we lift up this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Suggest you stand together. So uh, I'm really happy to see you as soldier, and I'm really happy to worship with our young and blessed uh, band. So 
Thank you, Lord, for the moms. We want to shout. Happy Mom's Day. Happy Mother's Day.
What we are preparing for the offering songs. Let us pray for offering. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Everything, every blessing come from you. Thank you so much. We can be joyful what you have provided us. We just want to give thanksgiving what we have. Our heart, and our money, and our environment, our attitude. Please receive everything what we prepared in our heart. Thank you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name.
for family protection while we sleep we pray for healing for prosperity we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering love is way too much give us less of this cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears what if the thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near what if twice of this So we said Happy Mother's Day earlier, but we have a little more than just a few words prepared. We actually have many words prepared with a melody in the form of a song. Um, some of you may have heard this song last year. Uh, Joshua Ong and Hannah Ong wrote it for their mom, and we're going to sing it again for all the moms today just to show how thankful, proud we see God's love in you every day. Oh. 
Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for the youth. This is really great uh, to, to have them to present this special Mother's Day anthem for us. And hopefully, uh, and again, Happy Mother's Day to you all mothers and mother to be and mother of many children. Okay, before we start, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for wonderful grace that uh, you give us family, you give us mother, mothers and fathers so that we know your love. Lord, in this special day of uh, Mother's Day, we all celebrate, not only churches, um, the whole world, we, set, we pick this day to celebrate Mother's Day, to pay our respects to our mothers. Lord, may you give our mothers all the health, all the joy, peace, um, and love from you. And also may you help them to stay strong and courage as we are uh, taking care of the family, the children. Lord, it's a, it's a wonderful gift uh, from you that we have our mothers and our parents. Lord, may you continue to bless our family. It help us know how to build our family through your, your teaching, your word, your guidance, and your grace. And Lord, at this time, may the Holy Spirit come upon us. Let's learn from the word and also, Lord, humble ourselves so that we can transform ourselves uh, from your word to be closer to you as you are our Father in heaven. We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. And today we are continue to uh, focus on the Exodus. And this is the starting uh, um, of a new series, actually from last week. We are talking about the journey to the Red Sea. We, we are going to spend a few weeks focus on uh, how Israelites they're crossing the Red Sea. And today we are, we're continuing on the story right after the exile. And last week we talked about the pillar of fire and cloud. So today we are continue to talk about when they follow the, uh, the guidance of the pillar and of cloud and fire, and they went to the edge of Red Sea and see what happens. Um, today, my topic is uh, called dealing with regrets because I find I find out chapter 14 in Exodus is a really interesting chapter. It mentions so many different groups, and among those groups, they have different regrets uh, in, in such instant. And when we talk about regrets, I want to ask you one question. Is having regret 
good or bad. So today we're going to take a look at, is it really good or bad? And then think about like, what kind of regret we should have or what kind of regrets we should not have. And we, as we talk about regrets, I recently I read an article in the internet saying that it's from London. That's a guy that he, he just reported that, um, he, he made an announcement, kind of like making an advertisement, ask people to help. Because he accidentally discarded his hard drive uh, in 2013. You may say, Pastor Vincent, what's a big deal discarding a hard drive? The problem is when he tried to do a like, house cleaning, according to him, he, he tried to throw away a hard drive he thought is useless, but then he got the wrong one. He threw away, he threw, he threw away a hard drive that have the private key of his Bitcoins. For those who know what's Bitcoins, it's a, it's a cyberspace uh, money, kind of like currency. That we're for fortune right now. He has seven thousand bitcoins that he had purchased over ten, uh, about like ten years ago, when it's not worth that much. But nowadays, for seven thousand bitcoins in two thousand twenty-one, it worth two hundred eighty millions, and he lost the drive. He discarded the drive on two thousand thirteen. Dumb it to the dumb, dumb it, and then now it's, it belongs to London's. Uh, like was a dumpster place, right? So he, he wanted to work with the city to find to give it reward, like 25% if you find the drive and then uh, pay to the city. But see, we feel to do that because it's such a big job. So he claimed he lost 280 million. I think there's a group big regret on dump the, the wrong drive. So brother and sister, when you're dumping your computer equipment, double check your hard drive and all your medias. But anyway, I think this is a, a we're not going to, uh, hopefully we're not going to have a regret that worth us 280 million. But many times I think small thing like um, getting out from the door, picking the wrong clothes, going to school, uh, picking the wrong subject. Um, I, I do have to talk about picking the wrong subject. I have a friend in the United States. He said his son complained to him because when his son tried to apply for college, uh, for university. Then uh, he asked suggestions from his father, and which uh, who's my fa friend, and he told him that, why don't you just uh, go to a community college first? It's much cheaper, and then you can uh, get some credit for two years, and then you can transfer to university. But then his son having a hard time to transfer, so he regret, but he what he did, he complained to my friend. You gave me the wrong advice. So this kind of thing can happen all the time, right? We, 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 we regret about uh, subject we pay, pay, we regret the school we pay. We sometimes, well, furthermore, I mean, I did a lot of counseling. Sometimes many people, they regret on the spouse they pick. And, and so many things, they regret on moving, move to Shanghai, they regret they left Shanghai. So many things it happen in our life because regrets. And today we want to take a look at the scripture Take a look at what regrets affect certain um, different type of people. First of all, I want to show you is uh, the regret of Pharaoh, which we, we all know about it. I spent a lot of time to talk about the 10 plagues, talk about the, the heartened uh, Pharaoh, talk about many things, talk about extra, exile, talk about the last play, and talk about how uh, Pharaoh, that uh, he finally allow and permit um, the Israelites to, uh, to exile from Egypt. But then, according to chapter 14, starting from verse 5, they talk about when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their mind about them and said, what have we done? I think this is typical response to some regret. Right? What have we done? What have I done? So, so this is what, ex that's exactly what happened to Pharaoh at this time. What have we done? Why we let them go? So they regret. And, and then they try to pursue it. Uh, so he took 600 of the best uh, chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. So what it mean? He took the best of the best of his military force and try to uh, pursue for the Israelites, try to get them back. And we all know, we all know the story, how it ends for them. They all die in the Red Sea. 
So when I take a look at this story, I'm going to talk about detail about the opening and the close of Red Sea a few weeks later. But today, we, as well, we, we know the story. If you think furthermore from this scripture, that will be a big reminder to us. Sometimes we think regret is, is bad, right? Because we must have done something bad, then we regret. But if you look at the story of Pharaoh, he regret, but he regret on the wrong thing. He, he regret, he, he give in to the Lord of Israelites. He regret, he let them go. So he tried to fix that from his own power and try to fix it in his own control. At the end, we all know that they all destroyed it in the Red Sea. So sometimes regret may not bring a good thing to us and it may cause severe, severe uh, damage in our life. And then I want to take a look at the regret of Israelites. Uh, so, uh, the, oh, sorry, okay, I forgot to put in the, the scripture. So basically, it said the Israelites complained to Moses. Uh, they complained to Moses saying that, what have you done? Why are we exiled from Egypt? We, we still have, if we never left Egypt, we'll have good food, we will have place to stay. And now, what have you done, Moses? You took us into this wilderness or uh, into this place, and then we're going to get killed. By the, uh, by the army of the Egyptian. So they complain. And also I find out that um, Israelites, they are sort of like a tribe or a, a nation. They like to complain all the time. Why I mean, why I mean um, it, they complain all the time? Because this is only the beginning. As we remember a few months ago, when I talked in the beginning of Exodus, when Pharaoh hardened their labor, they complain to Moses, what have you done? And now finally they exile, and then they're on the edge of Red Sea, they complain. And I'm going to tell you uh, ahead of time, for the many following sermon I will give in Exodus, they always talk about they complain. They complain and complain and complain. Why? Because they, because they should know God already. They, they observe the template with the Egyptian, but they, they had not been affected after the fourth uh, plague. So they know, and also they, they, they know God delivered them out from Egypt. Okay, they may be reasonable or they may be, it's understandable, they complain right now because they never experienced the great greatness of God upon them. So they complain that they're going to die on the edge of West Sea. Maybe that's fine because like, they're not uh, experienced the greatness of God yet. But how about after they crawl to Red Sea? They still complain and complain. Uh, we're going to take a look at it later that um, they complain about no food, they complain about no water, they complain about all this. They even have a time they regret follow Moses. So they, they pick, they want to pick new leader and split out and return to Egypt. But God demonstrated his power and he demonstrated he, chosen, he had chosen Moses so that at the end they follow. But they complain all the time. You may think about, oh, no, we, we are not Israelites. We are not, we, are, we know much more than, uh, than those people in the old days. We will not complain. But through my, ex through my years of experience in serving in churches, I can tell you, I hear complaints, I mean, here and there, and sometimes the complaint is uh, even, I still remember when I served in the youth group in the, in the Chinese church in San Diego. That's one time that I had parents complain, complained to me that if uh, we don't fix our bathroom, they will never come again. So they complain the bathroom of the church. Uh, and also I have, uh, I still remember cases like parents came to me and say, Vincent, uh, my son, he need to, he need to, uh, he, he, he need to be with others, and 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 but he's not old enough. I still remember that's the time that we have a youth retreat. We have a retreat for the whole church, and then we have youth in that retreat. I still remember that time that a parent came to me and said, 
uh, Vincent, you have you have arranged all the youth stay in different rooms together, but my son is not ready for it. So he needs to stay with us in the same room. So I follow the order, I follow the complaint and did it. So next year, I do the same thing. I try to arrange the same, the, the, that kid, the boy, to stay with the, his parents. But then the mother come back and complain again. Vincent, why you, you arrange my son with us in the same room? He should be with all the kids together. He, he, been, he felt being left out and feeling being uh, overlooked. So I look at the parents, what should I do? If I put it in the same room, you complain. I'm not putting it in the same room, you complain again. So and many times I, I face the times uh, when I ask some youth to participate and to serve in the youth group, the parents come back and complain. Oh, their highest priority is, the, is their homework. So they need to stay focused in the homework. They cannot serve that much time. And then later on, I, I try to assign less tasks to, to those kids. And then the parents come back to me and complain, why the other kid can serve at the church and be a leadership in the youth and, and my kid cannot? I say, well, what can I do? So many times in, in almost 20 years serving in church, I'm telling you, many Christians, they act like no different than the Israelites in the wilderness. They complain, why? I have to think about this, especially when I read the chapter 14 of Exodus again and again. I figure because they are so self-centered. The, in the beginning of Exodus, we all learned they cry to the Lord, the, the Lord of their father, the, the, the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They complain, they, they cry, they pray, they want the deliverance. But actually, when God giving them the deliverance, they don't like it. Because they're they expecting, what are they expecting? They're expecting five-star service from God. They're expecting properly a nice delivery. Or they, they will own all the wealth from Egyptians, and then they exile from, from Egypt, and then with the best weather ever. And then when they walk, everything is prepared for them. They have fleas all the time, no, complaint, uh, no problems, no harm from the other nations, and they just uh, peacefully and enjoyably having five-star experience in God, and they reach the promised land. And God should even help them to build all the houses, get all the water ready and everything ready, so they were living happily ever after. I think many Christians, we have the same thought. When we take a look at the prosperity gospel, or we, some, some churches, they're not claiming they're doing prosperity, prosperity gospels, but they, they are actually sending the similar message. When we talk about that you need to come to church with the best setup, when, you, when you're expecting people to come to church with the best music, when you come to the church expecting people, uh, once they believe in God, everything will go smooth. They have a better job. The family will be in peace. Uh, they, they can give more because they earn much more. They will have a big house and because God blessed them. I'm not saying that God will not bless his people. God loves to bless his children. But God, it's just also act like a father, he's also a father in heaven. What the father will do? I mean, I'm not going to uh, steal the honor of mother from uh, of, on the mother's day and talk about father. But, but what I want to say is that God is the father in heaven. So think about parents, maybe that's better, right? Parents, when the real way, to, the, the true way to love your children is not only give whatever they like, we need to show them sometimes when they're not ready, we're not going to give them those stuff because uh, it's, not, it's going to give them more harm than, than be a bene beneficial to them. So same as our Father in heaven. Many times that God, he does not give us things or God did not answer things we pray immediately because it's not the right time. And also, God wants us to have faith in him. And God wants us to follow him, not just follow the blessings from him. So this, this is the major difference. But when you look at the Israelites, 
all they ask is the blessing from God. So their faith or their belief sometimes is not much different from uh, the Gentiles or other people. They believe in the uh, other deities because all they are pursuing is for the benefits, for the blessing, for the good things from their, their idols and for us, from our God. But we never willing to give in ourselves. We never get willing to follow our God and give him the control. And that's the problem of Israelites. So that's why they complain. They complain from the first day they exile and they complain even the day they ready to enter into the promised land. At the end, and many of us probably, if you read the Bible before, you know that God said, that's it. All the men, all the male who are over 16 years old can, can uh, hold a weapon, have to, be, have to die in the wilderness before the Israelites can enter the promised land again. Because they complain, complain, and complain. And they disbelieve, disbelieve, and disbelief. So, well, on those kind of complaints, regrets properly doesn't bring them any good. And then, for Moses, uh, in chapter 14, you have one, sen one sentence from God. It said, the, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? From here, I then I understand a little the, what happened in the on that date. So properly what happens, Pharaoh, he regrets. So he pursued for the Israelites. And the Israelites, they regret, they complain to Moses. And now Moses, he regrets, why God, you, you, you ask me, you, or you force me to bring this group of people into the edge of Red Sea. Why you give me such a task I cannot accomplish? God, what should I do? So God say, why are you crying out to me? Because God say, he say, God told Moses, tell the Israelites to move on. Fortunately, although Moses, he may have some, he might have some regrets, but, he, he, but at the end, he's still willing to follow God. And I call you the scripture, if you have time, I urge you to read the, throughout the, the whole book of Exodus and then all the books written by Moses, that you learn Moses, he grew. He grew spiritually in God. In the beginning, he refused God's calling. Uh, it, it, then he will, at the, well, and then he's willing to follow. And then he, he did the hand play. He grew in faith. And he, ex, he took the Israelites to exile. And then, but he's still feeling struggle as a leader uh, for, the, for leading the whole nation. He struggled. He complained to the Lord time to time. But if you observe Moses, his growth, at the end, he really walked with God. He really walked with God. So he understand God. And in the scripture even said, he's the, is the, the meekest, meekest the, humble, humble, the most humble person uh, in that time. So he grew through his uh, regrets. He went back to God and then God showed him his way and he followed. He no longer regrets. At last, I want to compare uh, Pharaoh, Israelites, and Moses, their regrets with uh, Paul. The regrets of Paul, which was uh, uh, mentioned in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7. This is the letter, there's a second letter, but we, some people believe that maybe another letter in between. But anyway, that's uh, the second letter that uh, Paul sent to the uh, Corinthian church. And then in chapter seven, he mentioned this. He said, even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, that's refers to the first one he sent to the uh, church of the Corinthian church, because he uh, sort of accused them and bring, brought out all the problem they have in the church. So that's why when he sent the second letter, he mentioned that even if I cause you sorrow by my letter, by my first previous letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. So what does it mean? So it means when he first sent the letter, he regret send them the letter because he think it could be too harsh for them. But then what happened? He said, uh, 
after that, he saw, he saw that the, the Corinthian church, they change, they repent, and they correct their behavior of after they read the letter of Paul. So that's why Paul said, now I did not regret because I sent you a letter, help you to repent. So they say, not because, so yet now I'm happy. That's what Paul said. Not because you were made sorry. This is what Paul tries to say is, because it's not because I make you feel bad. So I feel good. Paul say, because you repent. Because he say, but because your sor sorrow led you to repentance, that made Paul happy about it. So he's no longer regret. So originally he got a regret. But if you think further, I honestly, that Paul's original regret, he's no longer, no longer regret because, because of the regret of the Corinthian church. So sometimes regret is yeah, good. If we regret and we repent, that's the thing we need to uh, do in the name of God. Because uh, I want to share you today or one verse, if you want to take one verse, out from this message and take it home with we'll this one. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, you say, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leads to no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. I'll read it one more time. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. So when I asked you the question in the beginning, is having regret good or bad? So the answer will be, depends, right? If you have your worldly regret, if you follow Jesus already, if you believe in God, but in your life, you still have so many regrets about your family, about your job, about, serve, about serving in church. I, I'm, I don't know how many times I've been telling you, I, I met so many Christians, they're so devoted and committed when they were young in church. But once they grew up, they regret their faith, they regret what they believe, and they turn away from God. That will lead to bigger regret at the end. But on the other hand, I met so many people in, in different ages, they regret what have they done in the world, from the worldly perspective, and they truly believe in Christ. And that's what the, the verse I just showed you. They have the sorrow in God, and they have such regrets. So they repent, and they finally experience God. So brothers and sisters, if your parents, if your mother and father, maybe you get regret in, 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 in your family, maybe you have regret in relationship, Go back to the Lord. Don't follow the worldly way. I like a story I heard um, uh, many times. He said one time that, uh, that a, a, a young lady asked her grandmother, how come, how come you, you can, I mean, in your generation, how come many couples, they, still, they can stay for life together? How come nowadays so many divorces uh, in, in, in the modern world? And the grandmother told that young lady, say, well, because in the old days, when the TV is, is broken, we fix it. When the, when, when the phone is broken, we fix it. And nowadays, when the TV is broken, what we go do? We buy a new one. When the phone is broken, maybe not even broken, it's not new enough, what we go do? We buy a new one. And the grandmother say, that's the same to many relationship and marriage. In the old days, when they have problem, they fix it in the family, in the relationship. But nowadays, many couples, when they have problems, first idea will be what? Separation. Let's get a better one. Those regrets is not regrets we need to have. Those, those are really regrets. But if we're willing to regret our thinking, our thought, God will heal wounds in relationship. God will bring people together because Jesus showed what unconditional love, love means to us. And we, will have, we do have such love living in us because we 
have Jesus living in us, or the Holy Spirit living in us. Remember last week I talked about that? We have Holy Spirit living in us. And also for the youth, I, I want to tell you a really bloody fact, uh, fact that uh, for many times I've been with youth, I, I've been in youth ministry, many times, different churches, I can tell you, most of the time, when youth are so committed in youth fellowship, youth group, when they grow up, when they go to college, when they get a job, when they get married, they forsake their belief. Most of, most of the time, for a group of, uh, most of the time, I, I want to say is, 50% of the youth in the youth group will stay in the church and 50% of them will leave. This is the fact that happened in the modern days. So youth, treasure the time you have right now. Treasure the time that you learn from the word of God. Pray to God, ask God to give you the repentance, the regrets from him so that you can get closer and closer to him. So that when you ready to leave Shanghai, ready to leave your family, ready to leave Swift, you will never leave your God. You're still walking with him. When later, when you, when you grow up, when you face the world, I'm telling you right now, they can bring you so many teaching, so many principles, so many way of thought, that will make you regret about your belief. But don't listen to them. Remember what I told you today. Stay firm, get the right regrets, the spiritual regrets, so that we can, you can follow God closer and closer each day. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for wonderful grace. Today is an important message. Although your servant is maybe or is incapable to, to share such an important message to the congregation, to our brothers and sisters. But Lord, may your Holy Spirit come upon us, touch us, let us understand that you already have your greatest gift and love upon our life. You give your only beloved Son so that through repentance, repentance, we can return into your presence. So Lord, let us have such regret in our life. Don't go back into our old life. But Lord, let's focus on to you so that when the world try to influence us, try to affect us, try to give us with regrets that we we'll, 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 we'll want to turn away from you, Lord, help us to stay strong and have the courage to follow you. Lord, from the story that happened thousands of years ago from the Israelites, they complain all the time. They, they always have regrets in following you. And we learn from them. Those regrets led them to death. But Lord, let us follow life. Let us have life in you. We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. Okay, would you stand and we want to close as worship service. We want to respond with this song still with you to the Lord.
find rest my soul in Christ alone no Again, happy Mother's Day Again, to you. Happy Mother's Day to you all. To you uh, all. And for all the children today, give the best day to your mother, and no complaints like the Israelites, and give them a good, uh, take them to a good restaurant, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And also, uh, just a reminder, we have an offering box uh, close to the entrance of at Sozo, and also we have a QR code print on top of it. So if you uh, want to make offering, feel please feel free to come earlier to give it or after the worship service. And now may we all bow our head and receive the benediction. May the love of our Father, the grace of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, all the mothers, and our family, and our friends from now and forever. Amen. <laughs>